Hey guys, it's Aria. Um, the first thing I want to do before I get right into this video is just apologize for being MIA for about the past two months. I think the last time I made a video was on August 1st. School started, the whole college application process started, which I know many of you are seniors, so you guys are all super familiar with. Um, so you guys know how stressful that's been, and that's kind of where I've been. Um, but I'm going to start making videos again. I hope to keep up with it. And in the next few months, I'll start addressing the Common App, what colleges I'm applying to, have been getting into, how to fill out the Common App for all of you juniors that want to know a little bit more about this. So now, how to get a 770 plus on the Math 2 exam. A few quick things you should know before um, even considering whether or not you're going to take Math 2. Number one is make sure you've taken Algebra 2 and Pre-Calculus before you take this exam. Preferably Pre-Calc Honors if your school offers that. If not, Pre-Calculus will be just fine. There is no Calculus on this test at all, although it might help you on some questions. I didn't have any Calculus background when I took it. I know 99% of test takers don't. Um, but definitely Geometry, Algebra 2, and Pre-Calculus are absolutely necessary. The second thing is to make sure you have a graphing calculator. You will be at a disadvantage on this test, unfortunately, if you do not. The third is to know factorials, combinations, and permutations. And if you took the SAT or ACT, chances are you studied these a little bit and know the basics. I know they aren't in most um, schools' curriculums anymore for math, but they definitely show up on every single Math 2 exam, at least every practice test and real test that I've taken. So be sure to know the basics and it will be a few, uh, free few points on every test. And the fourth thing to know is to make sure you review your geometry. Um, chances are you're taking this test as a junior or possibly as a senior, um, depending on your school. On um, you probably you probably took geometry as a freshman. Again, depending on your school, maybe not, maybe in eighth grade, maybe as a sophomore, I don't know. But chances are it's a few years before you're actually taking this exam. And math two tests a pretty fair amount of geometry, so you're gonna want to make sure you review that. So now getting into the actual test. Um, on the Math 2 exam, the questions increase in difficulty. It's actually very similar to the ACT math section, in my opinion, and I made a whole video on how to tackle that, um, which is very in-depth if you want to go watch that. It's right on my channel. So there are 60 questions on this test, and you're going to want to try to answer and get correct um, the first 30 of them in 20 minutes. If you can do that, I think you're on your way to do really well. And I know that this can seem daunting at first, and it took me a few tests to be able to actually get that down. It honestly just takes practice, and I'm going to talk about how you can actually get there. My second tip is to use your graphing calculator as much as possible. So this test, some of the computation you might not think is very complicated, and it's not. However, you might, not, you might know how to answer a question, which is the harder part to be able to figure out how to answer it. So then if you screw up the computation, not only do you not get that point, but on this test, you actually lose points for wrong answers. So just use your calculator, it's there. Take the extra 10 seconds and make sure you're doing the math correctly. Otherwise, you're gonna end up losing points. And trust me, that quarter of a point that you end up losing for each wrong answer adds up super, super fast. So just check everything on your calculator that you have time for. Another big tip, which I know I've mentioned before in my ACT videos, is to buy the official College Board SAT Math 2 book, which I have. It is this one. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yes. So this purple book it has four previously administered tests in there, which are real tests. So this is the closest you're going to get to the real exam. So definitely take a look at that and definitely do all four exams in there. It's the best practice you're going to get. Because these are previously administered tests, a lot of the questions on test day are going to seem very familiar and they'll be the exact same concepts, just slightly different problems, slightly different numbers. Which means if you get a question wrong on the practice test, which I mean you will, everyone does, don't just glaze over it. Actually figure out what you did wrong because that same exact concept is going to show up on test day. If you get it wrong on the practice test, you don't figure out what you did wrong, you're going to get it wrong again on test day. And like I said, you lose points for wrong answers. It's not like the ACT or SAT where there's no guessing penalty. There is. And those points add up so fast. So do all the practice tests. Definitely time yourself on each one and go through the answers you get wrong. Ask a math teacher. A lot of times you can find explanations online. There's great explanations in the book, um, but just pretty much make sure you understand the concept. Now I have a couple guessing tips for you guys. So math two is nice because the curve is insanely huge. Um, 
you can generally get like a 40 out of 50 raw score and your skills score would be an 800, which is perfect. And I think that's the biggest curve out of any um, SAT subject task. So my advice for you with guessing is that, because like I said, you lose points and that adds up fast. If you can't eliminate any answers or if you can only eliminate one answer, just don't guess at all. Just skip the question, move on to something else that you know you can get correct. Now, if you can eliminate two or more answers, it might be worth it to guess. At this point, you have to look at how many answers you think you've gotten correct and how many you're planning on guessing on. For instance, if you're almost positive that you've gotten, say, 40 out of 50 of the um, questions correct and you have 10 left, I would say guess on all of them because even if you get all 10 wrong, you're still probably going to be at a 770 plus. It does depend on the scale. Sometimes you might be a 760, sometimes a 780. But if you get even one out of those 10 correct, you'll probably be bumped up to a 780 or maybe even 790, depending on the scale. So guess. However, if you if you think you've only answered like 36 or 37 of the questions correct, that's barely a 770 as is. And this video is about getting a 770 plus. If you get a 750, 740, that's still an amazing score. I'm just talking about the 770 plus region. Um, then you probably don't want to risk guessing because your score is going to get lower to below a 750. Chances are. So that's it for my tips on how to get a 770 plus on this math 2 um, exam. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please give it a like, subscribe, and leave, tell me in the comments. Give me some feedback. Um, let me know what you guys want me to make a video about next. Subscribe for more future college content.